Hello, I'm Gavin Howie, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And today, well, my camera isn't with me. It is actually right up there on the ceiling, because this is going to be a top-down, low-key portrait shoot in my small home studio. And believe it or not, this is a really important piece of kit for this shoot in a way you might not imagine. So whilst I'm blowing a few of these up, remember to click on the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss any of the great content we have pretty much every day right here in Adorama TV. Right, I think I need to set a light up. Let's get a model in. Let's get shooting. So let's start from the top and work our way down. So this is a, a top down shoot. So the most important thing is of course, getting the camera up high. And what I've done in my small home studio is literally attached it to the ceiling of my studio using a bunch of random clamps. Now, however you're gonna do this, whether you're gonna attach it like this or use a boom arm, safety is the most important thing. What you do not want to happen is for that camera to come loose and fall down on top of your model. That would be a really bad thing. So once you've got your camera in position, obviously you need some way to see what's going on and of course, fire the shutter. So that means this little orange tether tools cable that runs all the way down to my laptop, which gives me a very handy live view. Now I'm using Olympus cameras with Olympus Capture software, which gives me an actual live view of my camera, but also allows me to remote control the settings and fire the shutter just by touching the screen. So once you've got the camera and the laptop set up, what are you gonna actually photograph? Well, you could do absolutely anything. There are loads of options with a top-down shoot, but for this one, I wanted to keep it nice and simple with a low-key feel. So on the floor, I've got some black fabric, which is a little bit textured, it's a little bit reflective. It will make a really nice background. And this is where it starts to get a bit confusing because the floor is the background for my shoot. Yeah, at this point, what I think we need to do is get a model in and get this to make a bit more sense. So to help me out today, I've got the amazing Sophie. Sophie is gonna be the model for this shoot. And I'm gonna start by showing you one of the downsides of asking someone to model lying down. So Sophie, if you can go back. So when you get someone to lie down, gravity, it doesn't work in the same way that it does when you're sat up and it really shows in the pictures unless you're careful. Now, Sophie is an experienced model. She's done this before, but you can see there's a certain awkwardness to the pose. It's not comfortable. It doesn't quite look right. So the solution is pretty low tech, but it kind of works. What you need to do is put something behind your model's head just to lift it off the ground. And what we've got in this case is a small black balloon. So that's gonna be Sophie's headrest. It's small enough that she can actually hide it behind her head and it should give us a better result. And that one small change just makes a massive difference. Now Sophie is a little bit more comfortable, but also it just looks better in the final pictures. So we know how this shoot's going to work, but of course we've got to think about how we're going to light it. And the lighting isn't quite as obvious as it might at first seem, because you've got to remember that the floor is now the wall and you have to light it that way round. So it takes a bit of thinking about. The first thing you don't want to do is put the light where you would normally put it, which is over there in front of Sophie towards the camera, because that would become light underneath Sophie. So it has to come up this end of my studio. Then I have to elevate it up in the air and not have it down too low, because if it's down low, it would be like really edgy, contrasty lighting. There's no right or wrong with this. A little bit of trial and error is probably a good idea. So I'm gonna use quite a big strip box. That's gonna give me a little bit of leeway and latitude. And I'm gonna put it here. Let's try that. Okay, Sophie, if you'd like to lie down again. Here we go. And that works quite well. We've got a lit side that's brighter, closer to the light, and then a shady side on the left of this shot. And although I think that works quite well, I want to put just a little bit of light on that left-hand side. So what I'm gonna do is add in a second light just to put a little bit of fill light onto the side. Now I am gonna put this on a very low light stand and it's gonna come a little bit above Sophie's head when we're looking from the top, just like this. And I'm hoping that this is going to work. So let's get that right into the corner and we'll try that. 
and it looks fantastic. That fills in the shadows with just a little bit of light, but it keeps that nice shadow and contrast of the original picture. So you might be wondering, how am I able to control the power of the flashes without climbing up and adjusting the transmitter that's attached to the camera? Well, I'm doing it because I have a second transmitter here. Now this transmitter is on the same channel as the one on the camera, but the one on the camera is set to its app mode. That basically means anything I dial in on this transmitter will be mirrored on that transmitter and it just works. It's a neat little workaround with these flashpoint transmitters. Okay, let's take a few pictures like this and see how we go. To mix it up a little, I've just asked Sophie to turn around, but because I've done that, I need to rethink the lighting. So all I've done here is just switched off the original fill light, meaning this is now just a one light setup. Doing a top-down shoot makes sense, but only if you have something in the background that you couldn't do against a wall. So it turns out we had more balloons than just the one, and we've made a background of balloons. Now this is one of those shoots where there isn't much control over where they go. We've made a bit of a frame to keep them in place, but frankly, I don't think that's going to work very well. Let's try a few shots and see how this looks. Once again, I have asked Sophie to turn herself around and once again, I turned off the fill light. And in order to keep Sophie entirely in the frame, I've asked her to change her pose and keep her knees up. Well, that went really well. And even in my small home studio, I was able to get a full length top down portrait. Well, sort of. Now, if you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, leave me a comment below. Click on the bell icon because then you won't miss any of the great content right here at Adorama TV, including this recent video by Daniel Norton, where he shares his controversial opinions on the ground. And we're not showing the ground because the ground is, is ugly. And of course, don't forget to click on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.